All right, now let's pump it up for your next comic. He was part of the Great American Comedy Festival, Tommy Ryman. Thanks, guys. Oh, man, it's good to be here. A little bit about me, you guys. I can do one pull-up. That's how many pull-ups I can do. One. That's where I stop, at one. A lot of people are like, Tommy, why don't you do more than one pull-up? You should be able to do more than one pull-up. But I think one is the perfect amount of pull-ups to be able to do. Yeah. Because when in real life are you ever going to have to do more than one pull-up? When is that situation ever going to happen? Like, even if you're hanging off a cliff, you just got to get up there one time. Yeah. It's not like you're going to get up there and be like, you know what, I'm going back down a couple more times. Today's the day I'm going to beat my record. Are there sharks down there? This just feels right. So my dad makes kale chips. Makes kale chips. He loves his kale chips. He's always like, Tom, you got to try these chips. They're made out of kale. Yeah. Once you try these kale chips, you're never going to want a regular chip ever again because these kale chips are so good. So I finally tried one. I was like, oh, no. My dad forgot what chips taste like. That's so sad. Now we have to put them in a home? Oh. Yeah. I thought we had to take his keys away first, but no, it's kale chips. I don't know if you guys have ever had kale chips, but they're disgusting. They're not good. Kale chips are like basically like if you left a salad out for five days, and then we're like, those are chips now. Get that. Those are chips. They're done. We've been cooking them for five days on the counter. Now they're ready. Get them into your belly. Yeah. I just got a new puppy. I got a new puppy. That was exciting. Yeah. Got a new puppy. Thank you for for my purchase, that was good. A lot, of, a lot of people were mad at me. They're like, why'd you get a new puppy? You should get a rescue dog. You should get a dog and you get a rescue dog. And I understand that, like I support that a rescue dog is 100%, but I've had rescue animals my whole life. Like I was like, I just want one fresh one, one time. Can't I just have a brand new one that I can mess up and somebody else can rescue it later? Yeah. So technically it's still a rescue dog, just not right now. Everybody wins. <laughs> My friend, she got, she got a dog. It was a weird-looking dog. It was definitely a rescue dog. I was like, what did, what did you do to your dog? Why does it look like that? What kind of dog is that? That's a weird-looking dog. And she was like, well, it's part golden retriever, part Labrador, part miniature pincher, part poodle, and part pug. And I was like, man, that must have been some night. <sighs> That poodle must be very tired. I bet she's tired. So. This is a story I heard about. I heard about this. There was a, a man walking to work at five in the morning, and he was attacked by three coyotes. Yeah. Isn't that horrible? That is so awful. I can't even imagine what it's like to have to work at five in the morning. That is so early. Wow, gross, right? Oh, man. I got up at one today. I was not attacked by any coyotes. It was a great day. It was so good. He was attacked by three coyotes. Like, it would suck to get attacked by one coyote. He was attacked by three. They should have let him leave work at least 15 minutes early, right, when he gets there? Like, you having a rough day? Like, yeah, I got attacked by a couple coyotes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shove off early if that's all right, Steve. Yeah. Three coyotes, that's crazy. In the article, he said that he was just happy it wasn't an old person or a baby. And I was like, where do you work where old people and babies are attacking you at five in the morning? Like, you need to get a better job that you're happy that it was a coyote and not another old person. Like, <laughs> somebody should give that guy a hug, but not a bear hug, because that would freak him out, because he, he was just attacked by three coyotes. My wife wanted a rat for a pet. She wanted a, a rat for a pet a while ago, which I was like, oh, people have those for pets? I thought they just lived in sewers and stuff, but you want to bring one into the house and raise it? That sounds like an adventure. So, and I love my wife a lot, so I was like, you want a rat? We're going to get a rat. Let's go get a rat. So we went to the Humane Society, and we bought a rat. Uh, here's some advice if you're doing any rat purchasing in your future. 
Uh, definitely go new on the rat. You want to go new on the rat. Don't go rescue on the rat. Yeah. Pay the extra $3 and get a brand new rat. Because <laughs> we bought a used elderly senior citizen rat. And rats only live two to three years. So this guy lived four months and then he died. And he died in Megan's hands. Like she was in the living room. I was in the kitchen making a grilled cheese having the time of my life. From, and then the other room, I just heard like this deep sadness that I never heard, like real guttural. Like I was like, is she watching What's Eating Gilbert Grape without me? Like what? She knows I love that movie. So, so I ran in to investigate and she was just holding this dead rat in her hands. And I felt super bad because that was her pet and everything. But I was also like, we need to get that dead rat out of your hands as soon as possible. Because I'm pretty sure that's what took Europe out. So. Probably, probably shouldn't be in our living room right now. So, so we put the rat in a shoebox and double bagged it in some Target bags and put it on our deck. And then I was like, what do you want to do with the rat? And she's like, I want to bury it. But this was February in Minnesota. So I was like, well, it's a little frozen out there. That might not work out. So I was like, what are our other options? And then she's like, I want to cremate the rat. And I was like, what? <laughs> well, I did just finish that grilled cheese. I could knock a rat out, I guess. I never thought about that. I didn't know. She's like, what? I was like, oh, you mean professionally get it done? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I don't know what you're, you're thinking. You want to pay somebody to do that. Yeah, that sounds. So we looked into to rat cremation, and there's places that would do it. They would cremate your rat, but it was going to cost $100 to cremate the rat, which exceeded our rat cremation budget <laughs> by $100. <laughs> Just missed it. So then the rat was sitting on our deck for a couple days, which was kind of like a visitation for the other neighborhood animals to say their goodbyes, like the dogs and the cats. And the raccoons, like, I like that thing you do with the wheel. That was real special. <laughs> so, so then Megan came home, and I was like, we got to figure out what we're going to do with this rat. So what we decided to do was just drive around the city until we found the most beautiful, amazing spot that had a garbage can. <laughs> and we laid Lex Luthor to rest. So he was by a really pretty lake for a day, and then he was carted off to a giant landfill. And then when we thought about it, we were like, that's probably where he wanted to be the whole damn time. <laughs> we should have just bought him and dropped him off at the landfill. Thank you guys so much. Tommy Ryman.